everyone it's uh, Sarah from Tombale again and um, I'm going to show you how to make a carved bowl today so uh, it's a very pretty like it's, it's a pretty small bowl um, I think it's only about 110 by 110 mm uh, it's a good place to start if you want to do bowl carving because uh, it can take quite a lot of time to clear out the material in the middle and uh, yeah uh, that way you might see progression faster I think you're gonna need a uh, mallet Gauss chisel. So I mentioned this a few times in the other carving videos. And uh, regular chisels, any size that you have. The bench pack. Uh, again, you might want to check out the video on how to make these if you haven't. Some uh, random scrap stock that you'll be using to um, kind of clamp stuff together later on. Uh, markers and a uh, pencil. Uh, also your back saw. And uh, this is a bit new. It's the coping saw. So if you've seen Guan Jin's new video on the uh, newer upgraded kit, this will be inside it. And uh, yeah, you'll see the capabilities of it later on. So yeah, we're gonna get uh, started. Uh, here is actually an ash blank. Uh, I've cut it to about uh, 110 by 110 mm. And thickness wise is about 30. So really any blank works, but I would suggest squaring it up. <laughs> and once I've established that midpoint, uh, it'd be great if you have a compass at home. If you don't, just grab like a round or the roundest thing that you can find. Uh, once I know that's going to be like at least two hours of <laughs> chiseling because that's quite a generous amount of space. Just gonna bring it to the edge here and mark out roughly where the rim is gonna be. I'm, I'm still not entirely sure if that's what I want um, the shape to look like but I will do that so I have a reference because once I start digging out the center I will lose that. And right now the amount of the material that I'm going to be removing is actually everything inside of here. This is my setup for um, gauge chiseling. So you'll notice what I did was actually just place the two hold fast there. They've not been locked down. They're kind of just sitting inside there. They provide like the uh, brace for a stop block that I'll place over here. Uh, just something long enough to, to span this. Just something longer than the blank that you have uh, over here. Because the way I'm going to be working is that uh, I'll back it up against this when I want to make cuts going in this direction. Back it up like this, against this direction, and you get the idea. So if you haven't already seen the scoop video, what I tend to do is always lay down the rim first. Uh, of course, uh, that's not necessary. You can actually go straight for, uh, especially if you're completely new to the, the gouge chisel, you can get used to the force of the... hammer and uh, the way that the bevel rides through the uh, material so you can take some of these like uh, practice cuts in the middle since basically there's a ton of material that we can remove from the center in fact if you do have like a hand drill at home uh, you could cl clear yourself a lot of um, material very quickly just by drilling some shallow holes up here and then uh, joining up the, the holes by clearing out the debris um, I'll not be doing that assuming that you don't have a hand drill at home so I'll do it completely by hand Otherwise, you can see that um, even though there's a lot of material removed, the gauge chisel actually takes out pretty um, big curls of wood at a time. Just a refresher on how the gauge chisel works. It's pretty much uh, got the same anatomy as a flat chisel with the cutting edge and a bevel. But this one's got a bevel on the underside and our cutting edge is uh, curved. For my first strike, <coughs> it's always to bite into the wood and then subsequently 
I fall into If it's your first time using the gauge chisel, definitely try a few practice uh, taps on the on the huge waist in the center. And again, I'm uh, reading the grain. So with this piece of ash, you can see <coughs> very clearly that uh, it's, it's running straight grain like this. So by working along the grain like that, I'm going to get quite easy peels of um, material out. So I have to flip it this way and work across the grain. I'm still not encountering too much tail because at this point, uh, since the surface is so flat, I am mostly working uh, across or along the grain. Uh, we haven't engaged like uh, the slope of the grain yet, so then we'll start laying down the rim. And what I mean by that is actually making a cut along the entire circumference of uh, this inner circle uh, without losing that line, you see. So that will kind of help us ensure that we have a pretty neat circle by the end. So because of the crosshair that I drew, uh, it actually divides it quite ne neatly into four quadrants for me. And that's a good guide of uh, when you should start turning the, the workpiece. You'll notice that I'm holding the gouge chisel pretty low down. I am not kind of, I'm not really holding very high up on the handle. Um, <coughs> although it's not completely necessary, this allows me to, uh, allows me a bit more precision. Uh, I'm going to just go around the entire thing and then I'll show you the result. So at about this point, I have a pretty defined rim going around. Uh, barely started on the scoop in the center yet, but at least you've laid down the perimeter of where you should be removing material. Um, this will also lower the likelihood of uh, stuff tearing out uh, too much further uh, these points, if say you uh, try and go up slope on the green, which you should not, you should keep working, you should still keep working within the quadrants, slowly bringing it down in a radial fashion. You can start to see that it's looking dish like, not a bowl yet, but dish like. And at this point, I'll show you how to uh, check the depth. So you want to keep checking the depth. Uh, once in a while just to know uh, how far through your bowl you're going and um, of course the final depth is your personal preference but yeah what I do is I lay something flat uh, probably a, a ruler does, the, does a good job of it uh, across the two flat ends over here and then extend stationary down get the lowest point so you'll see that I'm using my finger as kind of the marker over there then just transfer it to the outside. And obviously that is not much and I probably have to take out quite a bit more material. But that's how I would check the depth. And if you if say you did want a very shallow bowl and that would and you're happy with that, that's that's fine as well. Now would kind of start my cleanup process, and uh, what I mean by that is actually because I want to go with a carved finish, so I'm gonna take uh, uh, cuts with the gouge chisel uh, to going towards the center point, ending up. I want all my cuts to converge over here, so the the final appearance that I'm gonna end up with would would look like uh, uh, something radial. Uh, with the cuts kind of all meeting up in the center over here. So once I've gone all the way around, I will have actually these smoother channels and uh, all of them are going to con converge right in the center. So there will be more chances to fine tune the inside even later on, but uh, why you want to do most of the heavy work now is because uh, it's still got its square shape and that's why we can butt it up very easily and it's got a lot of support uh, and uh, we can take harder hits with the mallet.
so you can try pairing them and uh, that is what I will be doing so pairing is basically I a uh, very fine adjustment of the scoop that you have over here and I'm still using the, the gauge chisel the same way I will still engage the uh, cutting edge in the wood first and then I'll let the bevel kind of like push it forward I'm purely using hand strength over here and again for safety reasons I am keeping my fingers out of the way of the cutting edge I'm cutting like that with my other hand either supporting uh, the workpiece or counterweight or being a counterweight on the chisel like that now I've got the bowl roughly to the shape that I want uh, I'm actually going to start sawing the corners now what I'm using is actually this uh, copy saw and I am quite excited to use it because it's kind of a new toy but unlike the back saw which I would have to do bit by bit by bit uh, this copying saw this, this big boy yeah it should allow a bit of bending along uh, the curve there so let's give it a try <laughs> You see, I can actually follow the curve along this way. Yeah. Uh, the copying saw, of course, it's uh, it's got a very very small blade, so uh, there is a limit to how much material you can kind of like saw to. Uh, I would say thirty, pushing it slightly. I wouldn't go any wider than that. And of course, this will take me a while. Okay, I'll show you when I closer to the end. This. What this coping saw allows is for us to do a, a curve. Uh, like I said, this is quite a bit of material for the coping saw. So uh, another thing you can do is to, to do a, a cut down the middle first. So you only have to manage about this much, pop this off, and then we'll do the other half. Right. So you can see I made the uh, cut over there. And now I'm just going to have to saw it out to this point, let that pop off get the other side okay. at this point we've rounded out one corner and I'm gonna go for uh, this other one over here uh, do all the rest as well now mm -hmm. once you've got the round shape uh, cut out we will want to start working on the shaping of the base over here so um, you can see ov over here this is uh, one example of how I start cutting a bit of a curve into the bottom and uh, that's just to give you a visualization of it as I go ahead and do it for the rest of the bowl so I've kind of like roughly marked out this portion which is what I'm going to be sewing down but you notice it's quite a long stretch so I would strongly recommend making one cut in the center and then uh, you can do uh, this in two portions so this is gonna fall out and then this one's gonna fall out you can use either of your saws to make this uh, cut over here but I prefer to use the back saw just because it's a bit faster I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust how it's hold faster to get this other side. Uh, you can see that the coping saw actually produces quite like a smooth uh, curve over here. It's also because we're going through a lot less material than we were when we were cutting this big circle up. And uh, after you've bulked out like uh, about, I like to split it into three parts, you will notice that we only have these corners to go for now. And we'll do another light saw or off of these to get uh, roughly rounded shape before we go into further refining. <laughs> 